In part one, we began the story of Thor's visit to Jotunheim. So let's continue. Utgard Loki, the king of the frost giants, regarded Thor and his companions with a scornful smile and said, If I do not mistake me, that stripling yonder must be the god Thor. Perhaps thou mayest be more than thou appearest to be. What are the feats that thou and thy fellows deem yourselves skilled in? For no one is permitted to remain here who does not, in some feat or other, excel all other men. The feat that I know, said Loki, is to eat quicker than anyone else, and in this I am ready to give proof against anyone here who may choose to compete with me. That will indeed be a feat, if thou performest what thou promised, said Utgard Loki, and it shall be tried forthwith. He then ordered one of his men, whose name was Logi, to come forward. A trough filled with meat, having been set on the hall floor, Loki placed himself at one end and Logi at the other. Each of them began to eat as fast as he could, until they met in the middle of the trough, but it was found that Loki had eaten only the flesh. While his adversary had devoured both flesh and bone, and the trough to boot, all the company therefore judged that Loki was vanquished. Utgard Loki then asked what feat the young man who accompanied Thor could perform. The Elfi answered that he would run a race with anyone who might be matched against him. All rose and went to a plain, where there was good ground for running, and calling a young man named Hugi, bade him run a match with the Elfi. In the first course, Hugi so much outstripped his competitor that he turned back and met him not far from the starting place. Then they ran a second and a third time, but Thialfi met with no better success. Utgard Loki then asked Thor in what feats he would choose to give proofs of that prowess for which he was so famous. Thor answered that he would try a drinking match with anyone. Utgard Loki bade his cupbearer bring a large drinking horn, and said, Whoever is a good drinker will empty that horn in a single draft, though most men make two of it, but the most puny drinker can do it in three. Thor looked down at the horn, set it to his lips, and, without drawing breath, pulled as long and as deeply as he could. But when he set the horn down and looked in, he could scarcely perceive that the liquor was diminished. Thor went to it again, with all his might, but when he took the horn from his mouth, it seemed to him that he had drank less than before. How now, Thor? Thou wilt not be called so mighty, if thou showest no greater prowess in other feats than methinks will be shown in this. Thor, full of wrath, again set the horn to his lips and did his best to empty it, but on looking in, found that the liquor was only a little lower. I now see plainly that thou art not quite as stout as we thought thee, but wilt thou try another feat? What new trial hast thou to propose? We have a very trifling game here, in which we exercise none but children. It consists in merely lifting my cat off from the ground. A large gray cat sprang onto the hall floor. Thor put his hand under the cat's belly and did his utmost to raise him from the floor, but the cat, bending his back, had only one of his feet lifted up, seeing which Thor made no further attempt. This trial has turned out, said Utgard Loki, just as I imagined it would. The cat is large, but Thor is little in comparison to our men. Little as ye call me, answered Thor, let me see who among you will come hither, now that I am in wrath, and wrestle with me. Utgard Loki replied, Call hither that old crone, my nurse Ellie, and let Thor wrestle with her if he will. She has thrown to the ground many a man not less strong than this Thor is. A toothless old woman then entered the hall, and was told by Utgard Loki to take hold of Thor. The more Thor tightened his hold on the old crone, the firmer she stood. At length, after a very violent struggle, Thor began to lose his footing, and was finally brought down upon one knee. Utgard Loki then told them to desist, 
adding that Thor had now no occasion to ask anyone else in the hall to wrestle with him, and it was getting late. So he showed Thor and his companions to their seats, and they passed the night there in good order. The next morning, at break of day, Thor and his companions dressed themselves and prepared for their departure. Utgard Loki led them to the gate of the city, and on parting asked Thor how he thought his journey had turned out and whether he had met with any men stronger than himself. Thor told him that he could not deny, but that he had brought great shame on himself. And what grieves me most, he added, is that ye will call me a person of little worth. Nay, said Utgard Loki, it behooves me to tell thee the truth, now that thou art out of the city, which so long as I live, thou shalt never enter again. Know then that I have all along deceived thee by my illusions. First in the forest, where I tied up the wallet with iron wire so that thou could not untie it. After this thou gavest me three blows with thy mallet. The first, though the least, would have ended my days had it fallen on me, but I slipped aside and thy blows fell on the mountain. Where thou wilt find three glens, one of them remarkably deep. Loki, like hunger himself, devoured all that was set before him. But Logi was in reality nothing else than fire, and therefore consumed not only the meat, but the trough which held it. Hugi, with whom Thialfi contended in running, was thought, and it was impossible for Thialfi to keep pace with that. When thou didst attempt to empty the horn, one end of that horn reached the sea, and when thou comest to the shore, thou wilt perceive how much of the sea has been drunk by thy draughts. Thou didst perform a feat no less wonderful by lifting up the cat. When we saw that one of his paws was off the floor, we were all terror-stricken. For what thou tookest for a cat was in reality the Midgard serpent that encompasseth the earth, and he was so stretched by thee that he was barely long enough to enclose it between his head and tail. Thy wrestling with Ellie was also a most astonishing feat, for there was never yet a man nor ever will be, whom old age, for such in fact was Ellie, will not sooner or later lay low. But now, as we are going to part, let me tell thee that it will be better for both of us if thou never come near me again, for shouldst you do so, I shall again defend myself by other illusions, so that thou wilt only lose thy labor and get no fame from the contest with me. On hearing these words, Thor, in a rage, laid hold of his mallet, and would have launched it at him, but Utgard Loki had disappeared. When Thor would have turned to the city to destroy it, he found nothing else around him but a verdant plain. The End So what can we learn from this story? Well, how about, stay away from frost giants? Or maybe Thor needs to learn how to take a joke? His dad could have spent more time with him, teaching him how to laugh more and not hit people in the head with hammers. Or instead, maybe that teenage boy who used to eat everything in your kitchen is really the living personification of fire. Or how about the obvious? Not everything is what it seems. Every person has a past or a side of them you may not know. Every place may have a history or a secret that you have not heard. If you look deeply enough, you may uncover something you never expected. Or maybe it's just about frost giants. I'll let you decide. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for films and books featured in this video.